Would you like your home back? Are your children of age and still not leaving home? Well, stay tuned because this whole new series we're starting on the Dr. Dev and Mama Sue podcast is called How to Help Your Adult Children Leave Home. <laughs> this is just part one. If this is one of your problems, please come back for the subsequent parts. We have this first part focusing all on are they prepared to leave home? A lot of my friends have complained to me over the years uh, since our kids started leaving home about their kids n not leaving. And the number one thing I ask is, are they prepared to leave home? Because I think there's a few skills that they need before they launch. Um, otherwise, they're just going to end up back on your couch anyway. There's no boy. <laughs> You'll have redone their room into an office, and then you're going to have to put it all back if you don't make sure they have a few important skills. And number one, in my opinion, is getting along with other people. So does your child know how to get along with other people? Yeah. Um, so it's interesting that you said the word launch in there because in the literature, this phenomena where um, adult children are not leaving home, it's called failure to launch. Um, and it's been kind of steadily increasing over the years. Um, and also uh, there, it, there was an uptick during COVID because a lot, of ki a lot of kids moved back home, but still the numbers were going up. Um, and then also, I think um, before when we've discussed this, you've talked about like it's maybe you've noticed the trend for about 15 years. And about 15 years ago, there was this movie with Matthew McConaughey called Failure to Launch. Um, and it was about a 35 year old who was uh, having a hard time getting out of home, getting leaving home. And some of the literature says that it starts, it's really interesting that you talk about like getting along with people as being the, the first question, because some of the literature um, speaks this idea of, of this failure to launch problem starting much earlier, um, when not when the person is an adult, but when they're about 12 to 18 years old. If you note, notice like sort of a, a withdrawal from social activities, mm -hmm. that that might be a signal that later on they may be a kid who's going to be a... a who's going to be a failure to launch, um, young adult, you know, withdraw, maybe like sinking more into, into video games, into like sort of more solitary activities, sort of a pulling away for, of social activities. It means that they're not sort of gaining those skills that they need and sort of that balance that they need from others to figure out like, who am I? What are my values? You know, what, what am I going to do, you know, as I get older? That's yeah. interesting. I was just remembering my oldest son, during that period, actually around 15, um, started withdrawing from social stuff. And he had always been super social up until that point. So we were really surprised. Like mm -hmm. suddenly he didn't want to go do the usual social things. He really didn't want to talk to most people. Um, because our house was super social, he didn't really have much of a choice because kids would just end up there talking to him, right? But he really... Uh, took a big step back. However, he did leave the earliest. Hmm. He left the day after his 18th birthday. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So that didn't seem to go together for him, but definitely there was that withdrawal, and I definitely had some concern about that. Thankfully, I knew he already knew how to get along with most people, but, mm -hmm. you know, it was it was concerning. Um any concerns, I think, that come up in that period, parents should be actively addressing, you know, because um, any kind of problems that aren't well navigated, you know, 12 to 18, you're going to end up having to deal with it when they're adults. True, true, know? true. Yeah, and also there, there are just things that come up during that time, right? And so, yeah, you, you need to be aware of it. Um, come up during that time of like 12 to 18 as you say 
And maybe with your son, it was uh, maybe sort of that natural withdrawing sometimes, right? They naturally kind of withdraw from their family a little bit. And it, that is actually, but they're actually gravitating more towards some friends or maybe some friend group. And that's actually a healthy thing. They are learning to sort of figure out who am I, what are my values by, you know, interacting with others. Mm -hmm. So, and how to differentiate from the family unit. So, yeah, it's just, it's just something to be aware of. But I think... What the, the literature was talking about is a sort of like prolonged thing. And not only are they withdrawing from you, they're withdrawing from like any friend group too, mm -hmm. right? And just kind of like maybe they, all of their friends are online, which we talk about some of the kids did better during COVID because they were gamers. But still, there's this thing of like not having friends in the real world, you know, mm -hmm. that sometimes um, makes it hard for them to, to, for you to know that they, they can get along with people, which is essential for them to that have these skills to be able to leave home because you have to get along with so many people on your jobs. You have to negotiate with your landlord about your apartment. You have to negotiate, you know, paying your bills. There's so many things mm -hmm. that you need. Roommates. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to get along with your roommates because most people aren't going to launch into their own apartment, you know. They're going to live with other people and they need to learn how to get along with them, you know. It can be a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a good first question to consider. Oh, the second question I like to ask parents um, is, do they know how to manage money? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Super important. Like, um, before my kids left home, they not only had bank accounts, but they had, you know, managed them by themselves for years. They had credit cards. Yes, I did have to co-sign for those credit cards, right? <laughs> but they were in their names, and they knew how to responsibly use them. They had good credit scores so that they could go out and get an apartment, no problem. <laughs> they knew how much stuff cost. Like, they weren't in, like, baby land where things were just kind of magically landing in front of them, paid for already. <laughs> They do how much it Where costs. is this wonderful baby land? <laughs> well, I think a lot of parents create this for their children, not wanting them to suffer or worry about money before they have to. They kind of shelter them from the realities. And to do that now is super dangerous because everything's expensive, you know? And especially in areas like the Bay Area where the housing costs are so prohibitive, if kids don't know how much housing costs, then it's going to be kind of hard for them to leave, right? Because they might go out and look at a perfectly good uh, room and think it's crap because it's $1,200 and it's just a little room, you know? But in this area, that's actually normal, right? To get a little tiny nothing room without even its own bathroom you know for twelve hundred dollars yeah so. and in your place they've gotten used to a different standard of living right yeah yeah <laughs> they're used to having all their own stuff and maybe even their own bathroom and you know yeah. free meals yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah this idea of, of knowing what things cost and 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 um you know being able to have a bank account and all that those those things that's like a really um key like key important important point to look at and when when I looked at the literature, it, it talked about what causes this failure to launch. Um, uh, one of the things were lack of self-management skills, mm. which you'll sort of need. There's one thing to have a bank account and have a credit card, and another thing to know, to, to have the skills to, to pay it on time, to, you know, make sure you're managing, like, how much money is in that uh, checking account, all those things. Um, and th so these are the seven things that they said. They said uh, lack of self-management skills parent enablement, which was a little bit of what you were talking about there about, you know, some parents, you know, you're wanting your kids not to suffer. So, you know, maybe you're doing a little bit too much of, 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 of everything for them. So they, they, they have a difficult time. Um, and then the bigger ones were, um, these milestones that, that the kid kind of, uh, 
needed to pass through before that, but didn't, you know, mm -hmm. like maybe they didn't get enough sort of responsibility in areas, you know, or didn't kind of take enough sort of agency of their life yet. Um, and that goes back to the other literature that I was talking about where, you know, you see, you can see some early warning signs sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, and then bigger ones that we'll talk about in, in, in subsequent um issues of this this uh, podcast uh, substance abuse mental health disorders learning disorders motivation issues sometimes there are real reasons right that the kids aren't able to do these things mm -hmm. and so you need to be aware of that and early warning signs that may be indicating that they need uh, uh, additional help mm -hmm. so if executive functioning skills for example are getting in the way of them you know maintaining a bank account maybe you're going to help them a little more than you might the average kid or maybe you're going to get them outside help for that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if your kids are dealing with like major um, challenges, like um, it's also important to know whether the child has enough income to support themselves out in the real world, wherever you're living. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about this, how, you know, they need to know what it costs to live in your area um but they also need to be earning that plus some because in the bay area you know you have to make three times your monthly rent in new york i know it's four times um i don't know what it is where you are but i imagine it's some multiple of the rent right <laughs> and so that can be really hard if you're working at um you know an entry-level job and you're making Let's say you're lucky and you're making twenty dollars an hour. You know, um, you know how much does that um, cover of your expenses where you live? They need to know. Yeah, yeah, they need to know and maybe you know have some savings in place and and sometimes um, you know jobs are just to sort of you have spending money, but maybe think about what their what their jobs you know, or for and what they're, what they're going to be using their funds for. Just make sure that everything's kind of very uh, clear and transparent as you help them transition, you mm -hmm. know, what they're, what they're going to need and help them do the research um, or at least, uh, you know, not do, the, do it for them, but assist them in the ways that they need to be able to find out what's going on. Yeah, and I, a lot of my friends have found this controversial, but um, I told my kids when they turned 16... They had to be working part-time, you know, um, and that if they went to college that, you know, they, they could just keep working part-time through college and um, I wouldn't charge them any rent, but if they dropped out, then I'd have to start charging them some kind of rent, you know, after they turned 18. And, um, and I think it's good to tell them that long before it's a reality, right? Like, don't just say you have to pay me rent because they pissed you off one day. Mm -hmm. Let them know this long before it's even an issue. Like, I was having these conversations with them when they were, you know, uh, school age, you know? Um, like, this is the plan. When you're 16, <laughs> you're going to be working in some capacity i didn't care if they had their own businesses they didn't have to work for minimum wage if they didn't want to my kids did a combination of both you know yeah. working uh for others and working for themselves and i respected that i just wanted them to have the experience of working i think it's important even if uh you don't need your kids to help out with their expenses for them to learn what it's like to work uh, in entry-level positions so that they have more respect for the people who will be serving them, you know? Yeah. Well, and also just an understanding of how that works. I, like, from I know from experience, um, I actually want to go back to one thing that you said, um, this idea of, like, don't just tell them to pay rent one time when, you know, just because you're pissed off at them. I think in some ways bigger the, the, it's a bigger issue because actually it gives them an inappropriate relationship to rent. Is this like a punishment because I pissed somebody off? No, it should, you know, understand that this is the way that the world works. You're going to have to pay for the places you live. Uh, um, and also this, this job thing, I can say from my own experience, as a 16-year-old, uh, I was kept from getting a job. Mm. So, And so my relationship, it's like I sort of... Um, 
you know, didn't, I would have taken more pride in being able to get one. And I was struggling to try to have a job. And um, my mom, like, maybe she would have let me have some certain kind of job that she wanted me to have, but she wouldn't just let me, like, I think I've said this on the, on the channel before, I got a job at McDonald's and she told them I didn't want it. Um, and yet my sisters, who I've spoken to recently, one of my sisters about this, they had jobs at 16 and felt like such pride in that. And even my mom would send them on, you know, some errand after work, like, oh, after work, could you go by my favorite, you know, restaurant and bring us dinner or something? Um, they felt a lot of pride in that. And it just, it seemed like it, it helped them be adults more quickly and also understand that you needed to pay for things and that you needed to have your own money. Um, so I think in some ways, if you don't have your kids get a job, it's, it's to their detriment. You know? I, I found it really motivating too. I started having jobs, you know, um, pretty young and, and, um, the entry level jobs I had <laughs> really motivated me to continue uh, studying and continue um, getting credentials that would make it easier for me to get higher paid jobs because I knew I didn't want to be selling shoes when I was 40. You know, like, I really knew that. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like it would be clear, right? A lot of my friends gave me a hard time for charging um, my youngest son rent while he was living with me. A lot of my friends give me a hard time, right? Because um, uh, he's really young for his age. Uh, but I thought that he was capable of working for a living in spite of his um, being really young for his age. So when he stopped going to college, I implemented the rule that he had to start paying rent. And... You know, there have been some times when this has been a challenge for him, but most of the time he's been able to pay. And um, not only does that alleviate some burden for me, he actually takes a lot of pride in paying his rent and other expenses. You know, I think that there is a lot of good that comes from be being self-supporting, you know? Yeah emotionally and socially, I think we feel stronger. Yeah. And I think there's something that you've mentioned before too. It's sort of, if, if you're, um, if you do charge, uh, your, your child's rent, um, one thing that you can do if you're, if you're doing fine, you know, and you're feeling guilty about it is you can save the money for them and just give it to them as like a gift for when they move out. Um, but I've heard you mention this, um, if you aren't uh, doing fine financially and, and having them not pay rent is a burden and they're helping, it helps the relationship because it, you become sort of just roommates at that point. And then it's really great. It's like a roommate with, you were saying with uh, Sam, a uh, roommate with benefits actually because it's like they're still your kids. So you can say like, hey, could you help me lift this heavy grocery bag? You know? <laughs> Please come back for the second part, which is coming uh, next week, about are they ready to leave home, where we talk about the signs that they might be getting ready to leave, and share this with your friends who have kids who are struggling to launch. Yeah, and if any of you have um, young adults who are, who are having difficulty launching, uh, give, leave us a message in the comments. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Have a good one. Take care, Hopeful Tribe. <laughs>